Hey everybody and welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. In this video we're going to finish off the character screen. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon. That always helps me out. Also feel free to give me a thumbs up and comment if you have anything you'd like me to know. If you are interested in supporting the channel, feel free to visit the Patreon in the description below or simply hit the join button next to the subscribe button to become a member. So in the last video, we got the character screen to display a character on the screen with a tooltip that appeared. But when we click on the character, nothing currently happens. So we need to make some changes. So the first thing we want to do is just go to the character screen and remind ourselves of what is actually happening. We're creating an image button which when clicked upon sets the click type to character with a capital C and it's returning the character's code friendly name. So what we want to do now is create a bit of code which will use those two pieces of information to take us to the correct labels. So we're going to come back to our script.rpy and we're simply going to copy this bit of text here. Control C and Control V and then shift tab just to bring that into the correct tab alignment and we're going to just check if character is the click type and we're going to come back to our character screen and just check that that is correct so we can just copy that and paste it in there so what we need to do now is remove this and create a whole new bit of code here so what we want to do is we want to create a, a label to call variable and that is going to equal a UI turn. So we've got our code friendly name coming back. Just check that we've got that correct. Yep, it's UI return plus. So now we need to do a string variable. Uh, so we're going to come to our uh, classes to RPY and we're simply just going to copy this bit of code here like that. In fact, we're going to copy all of that instead. There we go. So we can now say you are return. So we're getting the characters user uh, code friendly name back. Then we're going to add the chapter and the sequence. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say if renpy dot has underscore label label to call. Then we're going to call expression label to call. However, if it does not exist, then we need to say call and we're going to call a label which is going to be the default for every character. So what we're going to say is we're going to create another variable here, label default equals UI return plus that. Copy that bit of text there. There we go. Now, what we have to make sure we're doing now, oops, I'm going to control S, not control C. What we need to do now is make sure that we create a default label for every character. So in our screens, we're going to close this down. So we've got back to here. We're in our scripts folder. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder. And we're just going to call this uh, chapters. So and then we're going to call the uh, we're going to create a new file and we're just going to call this character defaults .rpy like that so we need now to create a label called beth underscore default and then pop a return there so this whatever we put into this layer this label here is going to be what happens if we click on a character and there is nothing else for it to do. Now, we need to create some um, some items clicked, similar things to the items clicked here, sorry. So if we click on the character and there's nothing to do, we can simply copy this where it says no label. And we're going to pop that in there. Now, 
If you remember from our previous video, when we're saying notification equals true, we are telling RenPy to ignore um, the fact that we're going into a label. Essentially, we're saying keep showing whatever is on the screen underneath the dialog window when it appears. So all you will see is dialog window appear and nothing else will happen apart from a very, very slight darkening of the content on the screen. So now we can say, um, we can well, so you make sure that we've defined this character. So we know that Beth is the character. So we can come to our defaults. We can say define character. Beth, sorry, it calls character. And we need to pop brackets around that. And so we're going to say Beth is the name that's going to appear on the screen. And we're going to give it a color of, I don't know. That's probably a reasonable color to have her text appear. So now when we type in Beth in the character defaults, we will get her speaking. Just simply say dot, dot, dot. That's the standard kind of thing when there's nothing happening. And now what we can also do is we can actually create a file so we're going to call this uh, new file and we're simply going to call this chapter one underscore zero dot rpy and we're going to come back into here and we're just going to go control c and in 1.0 we're going to go control v and we're going to simply change that to one underscore zero and we're going to save and now we're just going to put into this Chapter one, sequence zero, like so. And I'm actually gonna do that again. So we're gonna create a new file and we're gonna say, uh, this one's gonna be one underscore one dot RPY, like so. And we're gonna copy this into there as well. Control C and Control V. And then in one underscore zero, we are going to finally say next, we need to put a dollar sign in front of that so that it knows that it's going to be a method. Now we come back into our classes dot RPY and we can find the method to see if we have actually got the, ne the next method. So we can come, there's nothing there. Locations, people, characters, clickies. So we actually need to define that class so we're going to say define next and we're going to say global chapter global sequence now we're calling chapter globally as well we're not actually going to use it right now but later on we might have say a list of how many sequences are in each chapter and then we can simply say when we reach the end of that number of sequences then the chapter increases as well however for the purposes of this i'm leaving it in there but we're not actually going to use it we're just going to simply say um sequence plus one like so and that's all we need to do so obviously now we need to come back to one underscore one change that enable name to one underscore one otherwise we're going to get some conflicts and then we need to check that we're actually in chapter one and sequence zero so as you can see we're actually actually currently in chapter one zero now so i've just changed the uh, sequence to one so now it's going to tell us which one we're in and we're going to say uh dollar sign next like that's in there as well so what we should be seeing when we run the game is we should go into the game and we will see Beth sitting on the bench. When we click on her, she's going to say, this is chapter one, sequence zero, and then it will move on to the next sequence. When we click on her again, it should say, this is chapter one, sequence one, then it will move on again. And then we should simply see three dots because there is no further sequence for her to speak of. So let's quickly find out if that works. We'll bring up our Rempi window, give this a run, hit start in there, go to the garden. 
So there she is sitting on the seat. Click on her once. This is chapter one, sequence zero. Click off her again. This is chapter one, sequence one. Click off her again, dot, dot, dot. So that is all working super duper. So we'll close that down. So I've just quickly off camera changed the name of the image file to match the new sequence number. So now when we go into our start, we can bounce over to the garden and she's sitting there. We'll click on Beth. This is chapter one, sequence zero. And then because we now have Beth underscore garden underscore one underscore one dot PNG, it's showing that. And now when we click on her, I'll say this is chapter one, sequence one. When we click off again, it will go back to the default image for this part of the sequence. And we click on her again, and it will just say zero, zero, zero every time because dot, dot, dot even because it's nothing. There's no instructions other than the default in that one. So I'm going to very quickly explain again why that's useful. So what we now have essentially is a game engine which will show a game universe which we can travel around using our map. You can fill that map with clickable items using the chapters prior to this one. Then we created our character screen which allows us to show characters which we can click on as much as we like. We've got a default label which means that if there's nothing else for that character to say if there's no beth one underscore zero when we're in chapter one sequence zero it will show the default for her however if there is then it will show us that label and what we're saying is chapter one sequence zero if we click on beth she will say this is chapter one sequence zero and then we can move on to the next part of the sequence you could have every other character's uh, click interaction in this file, but don't put the next in there so that you can talk to everybody else as much as you want and then click on Beth to move on to the next part of the game. So basically, if you were searching for an object, you would put this line in the object clickable. And that's essentially how it works. So you can just create an entire sequence of events now an entire chapter of things that happen and then you have to speak to the correct person or you could have them ask you a question and they have to answer correctly in order to move on to the next sequence you could have this next statement as i said in one of the clickies so if you had a clickable sofa clicked you could have maybe fall asleep and move on to the next chapter or whatever. You can put that next statement wherever you want to move the game onto the next part of the sequence without losing the interactivity of all of the characters. So if I were to add a new character called Dave, I'd simply add Dave default in the defaults folder. I'd add Dave 1.0 in here and I'd add Dave 1.1 in here and you could talk to them, have them say whatever they want. You can just build as much interactivity as possible. As I mentioned before, it is worth refining your icons a little bit. So adding shadows underneath the characters so that it actually looks like they're in the location, assuming that you're using Dash Studio to create your characters as I am. Um, that's really all there is to it to get the image, the engine basic. We're gonna play around a little bit in the next few chapters with things like user interfaces and stuff. I hope you found that useful guys, I really do. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you think I deserve it. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.